Hello and welcome to another Swiss RPG video. Today I would like to show you the new mapping tool that just got released on Steam, Dungeon Alchemist. So let's just hop into it. First we want to create a map. As you can see you have a couple of options there um, in tiles. So I'm just going to enter my map size that I want. Then I can select terrain. I have dark parchment, forest and grassland. As well as the elevation, flat hills, fjords, mountains, floodplains, ravine and canyon. I'm going to go for hills here. And you can select the standard vegetation, which is meadow, steppe or none. I'm going to go for steppe. And then I'm going to choose the predefined type. I have no water, river, lakes, lakeside and island. I think I'm going to go with lakeside here. And then you just click on create. You can of course also choose print or digital. But for now we're going to go for digital. As you can see it already randomly created us a beautiful nice little scene with some vegetation, um, lakeside as described. And you can zoom, pan, move around, and have a look at your nice little scene there. Then we're going to go and change that a bit, since it's probably not 100% fitting. So you have terrain tools where you can lower terrain, as you can see. You can make this a bit deeper there in the lake. Play around with that. And then we have something that we don't want. We have water there somewhere where it doesn't belong. So we raise the terrain a bit and modify around. Then you can flatten the terrain to make it not as bumpy. And then you can also clear some unwanted objects like trees, for example. Then you can paint stuff on this terrain, like uh, paths or grassland or even more water. So we're going to just paint a little path in here. Give it a bit of a shoreline. And there we go. There is different options, as mentioned. And you can adjust the brush size accordingly to your needs. And next up is going to be some rooms. So we have different options here. Those are predefined. We have different themes like village with uh, villagey themes. Then uh, we have tavern, mansion, festive, crypt, castle and alchemist's laboratory. All of them have different room sets. Some of them overlap, of course, a bit. And uh, it's up to you which one you use. The gingerbread house, of course, is there for if you wanted to do a Christmas themed map. As you can see the, the selection is quite broad. You have all standard fantasy needs that you could ever want. But for now I think we are gonna go for um, a little cottage probably. Let's see what we could use there. Um, tavern could work Yeah, we're just going to go for a random one here in this case, it's, I can't decide. And then you just um, paint your first layout, hit OK, and let the tool do its magic. As you can see, it already created an uh, entirely furnished room with some random decorations in there. Now you can have a look at that. And then continue mapping. So let's, let's give this a little bedroom, which we're just going to paint right next to it. Uh, I guess this would be okay. Again, hit okay. And it creates a bedroom. The walls um, appearance and everything else is random. We will change that later and you will see how. Then of course we need a bit of a service room. And I guess this could go there. Again, okay. Ta-da! We have a little service room with a latrine. And that's uh, that's already a standard uh, house by the lake setup. 
So if, if you like the random generator, you could just simply stop there or you could start and go for some decorations. Decorations there has uh, quite a variety, so it's best to then just search for it. Of course, have a look around what's there and uh, just by typing in bed, you're going to get all the bed options. Then I guess we need something for the outside. So let's um, put a little wooden bridge there where you, we can have a little boat. And then you can just freely place this object and scale it up and down. As you can see, you can make it quite huge or very small. I guess this seems to be all right compared to the size of the house. Let's put this over here. Good, then what else do we need? We probably need a boat. Um, we have canoe, rowboat. Let's, I guess we go for the rowboat. And since we scaled the bridge down, the rowboat is of course a bit too big in comparison. So let's scale that down a bit, put it over there. Looks nice as if it would belong there. Then we can add some upside down boats. Again, scale it down a bit and then you can copy the already scaled object and uh, place another one. Same goes for the other items. Let's put some paddles over there, a tad smaller. And then just make it look natural. There's other objects like columns and maybe we need a little tent for a person there to store stuff or just randomly live in. Let's put a little tent over here. Boop, boop. Yeah, this looks nice. Then maybe there is some kind of fishing rack. Let's see if there is one that I like. Uh, those are all with, all with tools, weapons, wine, also very important. Uh, no, let's let's give this person here uh, a working desk. So we have a carpenter's workbench, for example. We can just pop in here. So make it smaller again. Uh, I like this, yeah. And then the tool generates um, random tools there that you can then later move around, uh, delete or just scale up and down, as you can see. Those are generated random. So every time you pop out a new um, similar desk or bench, you're going to get new tools. It's quite fun. Um, pedals. Yeah, I guess that was pretty all right as it was. Yeah, there you go. Great. Now we have a little workspace there for carpenter that makes our boats. As you can see, it's already looking pretty great. But let's let's decorate this a bit more. Let's give this person there uh, a table to eat and uh, have family reunions. Um, no, this one has only bread on it. Ah, yeah, those ones. So let's give it a farmer's table. Farmer's table sounds nice. Just drop it in there and again you can then rotate the object or uh, move the items on the table around. Let's put this barrel over there. Then we're gonna get uh, the walls fixed. So this is a cottage so let's choose planks and then you can decide if you want to change the inside or the outside walls. In this case, we want to go for the outside. Just click then when you hover over it and are happy with the selection and it automatically changes the entire walls. This one as well does not fit. And there you go. You have a unified wall design. Then let's do something for the inside walls. Um, those are all a bit too fancy for this kind of cottage. So maybe we go with plastered walls and uh, yeah. I guess this one. So then now we choose the inside. Just click and it automatically changes and leaves the wall decoration as it was. It just changes the style. Then we, I would like to have the door over there, just right next to the path. This lamp there doesn't belong there. This bucket disturbs me. Go into the corner, please.
and as mentioned all of the objects all the lanterns all the lights can be freely moved as well as uh, those little objects here you can for example take this book and put it into the desk take this flask on the desk and decorate as you want same goes for the pillows or um, the other books that lay around then this here um, is a bit sad so let's let's give it a bit more there maybe a little um, little stand so let's take this table looks huge from the start so let's scale it down put it into the corner and then we have something to put the light on then I guess you wouldn't want so many windows in your uh, private quarters so let's go with only two windows those look great the others as you can see don't match so let's modify those we take this one and we can decide the direction of the windows I guess the handles go inside and then we just replace those windows to make it all look the same singular walls uh, if you just want to change one specific wall section would work the same as well as doors um, the, the handles are yeah inside inside is probably the correct orientation this one as well and then the last window over there to change this one as well great floor tiles can also be uh, changed um, just by drawing the floors on and then you can continue decorating I think some kind of a bollard would go over here to tie a boat on and then maybe let's give it some vegetation like trees for example um, hazel tree would look nice over here and a little evergreen another one some logs and branches you can just freely place them and then let's also give it a little some kind of rock um, how about this one make it a tad bigger and it actually gives us a visual impression and there we go this already looks pretty nice then you can change the mood the lighting of the scene you have pretty fat signs like sunset and sundown noon and night and as you can see then night setting makes the lights go pop I guess we're gonna go for some kind of afternoon lighting then uh, there I don't like this elevation so let's lower the tat here to make it look like a lake tat deeper and then let's place an underwater object there is a broken boat that uh, is pretty fine to sink into the water so if you place it on water it will sink down and then just uh, give you a bit of decoration on the ground Good. then how are we getting this into any kind of uh, virtual tabletop as mentioned you can first of all just print it out if you're not playing on a virtual tabletop but there are other options so first we want to save our creation here our beautiful little scene and then the next step is exporting so you click on export and then it gives you um, first of all how the map would look like and then you can choose foundry export you have fantasy grounds you have roll 20 universal vtt which is then just a map or a picture with grid or no grid we were going to choose foundry and then you can choose how the perspective would look like you can have the full 3d walls then the limited perspective gives it a little bit less perspective then and then you can have the full autographic top-down view with no 3d perspective of at all i usually go for the full 3d since um gives me a bit more 
Then you can choose the quality of the export. I usually go for 150 DPI. Then you have grid options, of course. You can export it with grid or without grid. Choose the transparency of the grid as well as the color. There are some fancy ones and standard ones like black is pretty standard. And you can also go for green, which makes it a bit aggressive, but maybe it's nice for um, future settings, sci-fi or something like that. But I usually export with grid off. Then you have a small little link there, how to export and how to import. And then you just click export. And after a short while, it's exported. Then again, it shows you the VTT import guideline link and uh, you're done. Next thing would then be imported into VTT. And here we are in our VTT. This is Foundry. And uh, in Foundry, then we just want to create a scene, give it uh, some name, uh, I don't know, house. Then you create the scene, close this dialog immediately, and we're gonna import our data from Dungeon Alchemist. So you hit import, choose file, then you're gonna choose the file. You can't see this since it's not recorded, but you're gonna choose the JSON file. And as you can see, it already imported the data. Then we're gonna configure the scene and put the background image in. You choose the file, which is then the image Dungeon Alchemist created. Click select, save changes. And ta-da! Our scene is in our VTT. Now the great thing is that Dungeon Alchemist exports um, wall data as well as lighting data. I will show you how this looks like. So you click on the walls and there you can see it already has all of the walls predefined in there. Uh, windows as well as doors. So this is a window as you can see it has no light restrictions and no sight restrictions. And if you want your players to be able to even open the window, you can then just say is door and make it a normal door, update, and then it would be a door. And you can then start to modify and add some more walls for this big rock, for example. Let's put a terrain wall in there that just blocks sight. Then let's check out the lightings. As you can see, lights are already placed exactly where the lights are on the map comes with a little color. You can then um, modify that if you want to and give it an animation. Here in this case, we're gonna go for a torch to give it a little flickering. Ta-da, there we have functioning lantern. That's uh, basically it. You're now ready to play on your new created map. As you can see, even with explanations, this was barely 20 minutes and uh, you're good to go. So I hope you liked it and um, yeah, have fun with the tool. Thank you and goodbye.